Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Over the course of this winter I've had numerous requests for me to talk about ski poles. Now just about any any pole can be used in the back country but there are some features that make some poles better than others. The first pole I'm going to talk about is the uh, is actually not a ski pole at all. This is a trekking pole. This is a pole that I use in the summertime. You can buy an optional basket for it, a powder basket. It's actually the very same powder basket that Black Diamond has on their ski poles. And it's an adjustable pole. It works pretty well. It's got a nice comfortable strap. And you know, if it works well in the summer, it's probably going to work pretty well in the winter. And the carbon fiber one is, is actually pretty low in weight. And this will work pretty well if you want, you know, a single purpose pole that you can use in the summer and in the winter. This is, this is not a bad option at all. If you ski a lot of flat terrain, you ski at the, on groomed trails, you don't do a lot of aggressive downhill skiing, you can get by with a fixed length pole. This is a pole that, that Julie's been using for many years and it's sized exactly for, for her skiing. I'm going to pop up a chart that shows the recommended length of a pole for cross-country skiing and you can pause this video if you'd like to, to see what that's all about. You know, one of the key characteristics of these type of poles is they have a, a strap system that's easily to get into. The uh, strap system is easily to adjust if you have, in her case, she skis with mittens an awful lot and then she'll also ski with lightweight gloves in the springtime. And it's nice to be able to adjust the strap, so easily adjust the strap so it'll accommodate big, thick, heavy mittens as well as lightweight gloves. Also, if you look at the basket, you'll notice that the basket itself is its not symmetrical in shape. It's, in other words, it's not round. The rationale for this type of design is that the pole is placed alongside you pretty much in a vertical position. And as you push, as you move forward and you push off, the pole becomes at an angle position. And as you extract it from the snow, you don't want this catching on the snow. So they, they don't have as much of a basket in the front as they do behind. It, it re removes that resistance from the pole. When you look at a, a set of poles that are designed specifically for skiing on groom tracks, they virtually have no basket on the front at all. And towards the end of this video, I'll show you some my skate poles and how those are very specific. But for now, we're going to concentrate on off-trail skiing. Up next, I want to show you a pole that I've been using for about six years. And this is the K2 Lockjaw Carbon Pole. It's an adjustable pole. And these adjustable poles, they have a locking mechanism. So you can set the height exactly where you want. They also have the length of the pole marked out so that it's quite easily to make your left and your right pole the exactly the same length. I set my pole at 135. That sort of follows what used to be the guideline for most cross-country skiing and that is to have a pole that's pretty much the length of your armpits. Now, the reason you like to have a little longer pole when on the uphill and in the flats is that you use the poles for not only for balance but also for support. And when you're climbing up a slope, sometimes having a good firm pole plant is quite helpful. Now, on the contrary, when you're skiing downhill, most people like to have a shorter pole. You'll notice that the recommended length for downhill poles is much shorter. This is what I prefer when I'm downhill skiing. Look, how, notice how much shorter that is. And the main reason that most people like a shorter pole when they're downhill skiing, especially Telmark skiers, is when you get in the Telmark stance, you want the pole to be somewhere around the shoulder, your shoulder level when you're in that ski stance. You certainly don't want to have your pole way up here. So for me, an adjustable pole is a must. But what are some of the other features to look for in a backcountry pole? And one of them is, is to have what's called a choke up mode or a choke up grip. Here's a typical example of why that choke hold is, is important. If you're climbing up a hill and you're doing a series of switchbacks, it's useful to have a much shorter uphill pole and a much longer downhill pole. But you don't want to have to stop and adjust the poles every time you switch back and forth. You can use this choke up hold on the uphill side and use your normal length pole on the downhill side. 
So as you're moving along, you're not reaching way up here, you're reaching somewhere down here. And then when you do your kick turn and you go back the other way, you just use the choke up hole on this side and your regular pull height on the bottom lower side. So if you're looking for a backcountry pole and you do a lot of side traversing on steep slopes, you're definitely going to want to have one that has a choke up mode on it. Another nice feature to have is to have a hook on your handle itself. And that hook is quite useful for raising the heel riser. You know, st straps are really important and it's sort of a personal thing for people. You know, some people like them, some people don't. Um, I prefer to pull with a strap. I know people that have actually removed the straps for safety reasons. And if you haven't thought about it, if you're not aware of it, if you ski down through trees and brush and you have your hand looped through the strap, if this basket gets caught on a tree or gets hung up behind, then essentially your full weight can dislocate your shoulder joint. And uh, that is not something that you want to have happen. You know, it's just good common practice when you're skiing down through trees or someplace where the basket may get hung up, is to remove your hand from the strap and just grasp the pole. That way, if it does get hung up, it's going to get ripped out of your hands and you're not going to dislocate your shoulder. They do make poles that have an emergency release strap. Uh, I don't happen to own a set of those, but the way they work is, is that if the force gets pulled in this direction, the strap actually come breaks away from the pole. It's an interesting safety feature. Also, when it, when it comes to poles and straps, uh, adjustability is important for some people. Uh, not so much for me. When I'm in the backcountry, I don't really need a good tight fit, and I tend to leave my straps pretty much the same length for the whole season. They're pretty loose. Uh, unlike when you're cross-country skiing in a groomed area where you need to have a good connection, a good tight fit between your grip and your hand, it's less important in the backcountry. So what I do is, is I have my straps wide enough so that I can put a heavy glove through there and I can still grip it with a lighter set of gloves. But there's a big difference between adjustability of different poles. On these K2 poles, the way you adjust the length of the strap, you unzip this cover, you pull this Velcro apart, you adjust the strap. This kind of a strap is, is padded. It's uh, fairly comfortable and it is really sturdy. The other extreme end here is a set of Dinafit carbon poles that I have, and they have a real minimal strap. In fact, it's really lightweight strap. This is the first year that I've had these poles. I don't know how durable these will be over time. Um, because it's a thin strap and it isn't padded, it's not anywhere near as comfortable if you have to do a lot of double pulling. Of course, what you give up in comfort, you uh, gain in convenience. It's a lot easier to adjust the length on this strap. You can pull down on this to make it tighter and then you can raise it up and you can pull back on it to make it a little bit wider. Now let's talk a little bit about the baskets on my backcountry poles. I really prefer to have a nice wide powder basket. You notice these are symmetrical. The one of my K2 lock jaws aren't the original baskets. Well, they uh, kind of broke up and I replaced them this year with some black diamond replacement ones. They're powder baskets and they're, you know, they're not really large baskets. They're about four inches in diameter. On the Dinafit, this is also what they call their powder basket. It's a little bit smaller in dimension, uh, but it's okay. You know, back in the day, we used to ski really big powder baskets and they used to have webbing in there. I find that both of these baskets work pretty well. Um, they don't have a lot of support in deep powder, but I found even the old style big round powder baskets didn't have a lot of support in powder anyway. Um, there are some advantages to have a smaller basket. It's less likely to get hung up. So it's always a compromise between float and uh, usability. These uh, K2 lockjaw carbon poles have some other features that most poles don't have. And when I bought them about six years ago, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, they had some features I'd never seen on poles before. 
and that was I think one of the reasons that it attracted me to them. But I have to be honest with you, in the six years that I've used them, I have not really used these extra features much. So when I bought a set of replacement poles, I, it wasn't something I was looking forward to. So what are those extra features? You can see on this pole here, there's actually a bubble level. And what that bubble level can be used is to determine the angle of the slope. And you can use it one or two ways. You can actually lay it on the slope to determine the angle, or you can side it up like this if you're looking up the slope or down the slope. This right here is a 35 degree slope, and this is a 30 degree slope. You know, most avalanches occur on slopes greater than 30 degrees. So if you're skiing something that's much more mellow, um, you're less likely to run into problems. When you start getting up to 30 degree plus slopes, and you definitely have to add caution. It's a feature I thought was, was kind of nice. I just don't use it very much. I actually have replaced that with an app that I have on my phone called Bubble Level. And I can take my phone out and I can side it up the slope or down the slope and I can quickly and easily read the angle of the slope. There was also another interesting feature on these K2 lock jaws. And that was if you remove the uh, lower portion of the pole and you unscrew this connector here. They actually have a threaded rod here, and this is the same diameter and pitch as a camera mount. And if you wanted to take a group shot or some other kind of shot on the mountain, you could use your pole as sort of a makeshift tripod. Of course, you'd have to stick this down in the snow. And then on the K2, on the opposite pole, they had the reverse threads. And I guess the idea behind that is you could join these two poles together. Now when you assemble the poles on this, you can unscrew the, you can unscrew the basket. And that can be a little bit fiddly if it's cold. And also with gloves. But you end up with a probe that's Looks like it's maybe six and a half feet long, and you can use that. You're not going to get very deep with it, but it might be better than nothing. Of course, I wouldn't recommend relying on that. You know, if you're in avalanche country, you really want a real probe. You want something that you can whip out of your pack, take it out, and literally Extend it in just a few seconds. You want a good tall probe, something that is much more usable. The K2 lockjaw probe you mounted together is 200, 200 centimeters in length. Now these poles are very different from my backcountry poles. These are skating poles. These are 160 centimeters. And the general rule of thumb for skating poles is somewhere around your nose or your lips. Let's take a look at these poles. See how they're different. You'll notice that the baskets are fairly small and they're only on one side of the pole. They're actually on the back side of the pole. The reason these baskets are so different from what you'd see on a backcountry pole as they're, they're designed to be pushed. They're designed for locomotion. They're designed to give you essentially a push off as you're in the skating motion or in the cross country motion. And the angle here allows the pole to be easily released. So there's no drag here when it comes off of the snow. The straps are also very different. You know, on back country poles, as I mentioned before, you, you wanna be able to take your hands out of the straps. When you're in the Nordic area, and you're on a groomed track and you're using your poles for propulsion, um, you want to be able to get as much force out of these poles as you can. And to be able to have your hands strapped into that pole and locked into that pole is really important. You'll notice these poles, they actually go on just like a, a glove. It allows the pole to be attached to your hand. It's just a lot more efficient. And having this attached like this allows that force to be pushed down 
through the palm of your hand instead of through the grip. And even though you're gripping it, you get force both from the grip and from the palm. That's the whole reason that's locked in there. So that's it. A quick look at the ski poles I use in the backcountry and for skating on groomed trails. Until next time, be safe and be kind, and I hope to see you in the next video.